viewers at home, my name is Akinwale Shifolaboro. Today, we shall treat Concord. What do we mean by Concord? Concord means agreements. The primary meaning of Concord is agreements. Concord is the agreement that exists between the subject of a sentence and its verb. Concord is the agreement that exists between the subjects of a sentence and its verb. These two elements of a se sentence must agree with each other. Subject and verb. You know, we have five elements of sentences. Okay, we have five elements in a sentence which include subject, verb, object, complement, and adjunct. The subject of a sentence must agree with the verb. What do you mean by subject? Subject is the doer of the action that takes place in a sentence. The subject of a sentence is usually a noun or a pronoun. It is usually a noun or a pronoun. The verb is the action performed by the subject. These two elements must agree with each other. When the subject of a sentence is a singular noun, it agrees with a singular verb. A singular subject agrees with a singular verb. A plural subject agrees with a plural verb. That shows that there is agreement. Now look at this example. The boy goes to school. The boys go to school. Now, the subject of this sentence, of the first sentence, is the boy. The boy is a singular noun. The subject is the boy. The boy is a singular noun. Hence, it agrees with what? Goes, which is a singular verb. That shows that there is what? Perfect agreement. It shows that there is what? Perfect agreement. Meanwhile, you have to take note. Any lexical verb that has the suffix S is treated as a singular lexical verb. For example, dance is a lexical verb. Dance is plural. The singular form of dance is dances. Play is a plural lexical verb. The singular form is plays. So any lexical verb that has the suffix S is treated as a singular lexical verb. Please take note. So the boy goes to school. Here we have a singular noun as the subject of the sentence. It agrees with a singular verb. The boys go to school. The boys is the subject of the sentence A. The boys is a plural noun. It agrees with what? Go, which is what? A plural verb. That shows there is what? Agreement. Please take notes. That shows there is what? Agreement. So the subject of a sentence is usually a noun or a pronoun. So now look at this one. They go to school. To school. They go to school every day. She goes to school every day. Now, if you look at this sentence, the subject of this sentence is they. They is a plural pronoun. A plural word, pronoun. In third person. Okay. They. It agrees with go, which is what? A plural verb. There is agreement between the subject and the, between the subject and the verb. She goes to school. She is a singular pronoun. In third person, she is a singular pronoun. It agrees with what goes, which is a plural verb. So, concord is the perfect agreement that exists between the subject of a sentence and its verb. In other words, when 
A singular noun is used as the subject of a sentence. It agrees with a singular verb. When a plural noun is used as the subject of a sentence, it agrees with a plural verb. The same thing is applicable to singular pronoun and plural pronoun that is used as subject of a same tense. Now we shall go further by discussing the rules of concord. Now let us write rules of concord. Rules of concord. On many occasions, when students are given questions relating to concord, students fall prey of the examiners because they are ignorant of the basic rules of concord. So this topic will go a long way to expose you to the rules of concord so that you can apply them when it is necessary. Okay. Now let's look at the rule of concord that guides the use of many a. Many a. Many a, many a or many an. That is many a or many an in concord. Now listen, when many a or many an is used at the subject level of a sentence, it agrees, it takes a singular noun and a singular verb. It takes what? A singular noun and what? A singular verb. When the phrase many a or many an is used at the subject level of a sentence. It accommodates a singular noun and a singular verb. Now let us consider the following examples. Many a preacher these days dash too much. And you are given talk, talks. The second example, the second example, many an egg dash eating in this house today. The third example, many A student dash to realize the difference between spoken and written English. Now let's look at the first one. Here we use the phrase many A at the subject level of this sentence. I've told you. When the phrase many a or many an is used at the subject level of a sentence, it accommodates a singular noun. So here we use many a. Many a attracts preacher, which is what? A singular noun. And a singular verb will be what? Will be, will be taken. So what should be the correct answer? Talk is plural. Talks is what? Singular. So what's the correct answer? Talks. Singular verb. Now, the second example, many an egg dash been eaten in this house today. You are given options, has, have. Now, here we use many an at the subject level of this sentence. It takes a singular noun. What's the singular noun? Egg. Hence, we choose words, a singular verb. So the correct answer is what? As. Have is plural. The, the third example, many a student dash to realize the difference between spoken and written English. Now look at the options. Fail, fails. What's the correct answer? We choose what? A singular verb is required. So what do we choose? Fails. Concord of many a. Or you say many a in concord. The next one is concord of proximity. Concord of proximity. Corre or correlative conjunctions in concord. Correlative conjunctions in concord is tantamount to concord of proximity. Now, we want to determine the verb agreement. Perhaps we use the correlative conjunctions, either or, neither nor, to connect two or more nouns at the subject level of a sentence. Now, 
when we use the correlative conjunction, either or, neither nor, to connect two items at the subject level of a sentence, the verb we agree with the noun or pronoun that is near to it. In other words, the verb we agree, the verb we agree with the latter subjects. The verb we agree with the latter subjects. Now, either or is a correlative conjunction. Either goes in pair with or, neither goes in pair with what? Nor. Okay. Now, when we use these two correlative conjunctions to connect two subjects, two nouns, at the subject level of a sentence, the verb will be determined by the noun or pronoun that is near to the position of the verb. That is why we call it concord or proximity. Proximity means nearness. Proximity means what? Nearness. Now look at this example. Either John or I dash to blame. Then you are given is, you are given am. Here we use either or, which is a correlative conjunction, to connect a noun and a pronoun at the subject level of this sentence. The noun is John, Why the pronoun is what? I. Now, the verb we agree with the latter subject. Do you know the meaning of formal and latter? When two things are mentioned, the first one is viewed as formal. Why the second one is viewed as what? So what's the latter here? I. Am I communicating? So, I will control the verb, not what? John. So, what's the correct answer? Am. You can't say, I is to blame. No, it is ungrammatical. I am to blame. So, please take notes. Another example. Neither John nor Shegun dash to come. Okay. Now, here we use neither nor to connect two nouns at the subject level of this sentence. Two items. The first noun is John. The second noun is what? Shagun will be given consideration in terms of verb agreement. The verb will not agree with John. Am I communicating? So, the latter subject determines the verb. So, shagun is a singular noun. Hence, we use what? Singular verb. So, let's look at the option. You are given was and you are given way. So, what's the correct answer? Was. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now, let me give you another example on that correlative conjunction. Okay. Neither the coach nor the players dash okay here we use neither nor to connect two items at this subject level the first noun is the coach the second noun is the players the verb we agree with the latter subject. It, the verb we consider the players in terms of verb agreement. The verb we agree with the players, not coach. Do I seem to go? That is why we call it concord of proximity. So players will be given consideration in terms of verb agreement. Players is what? A, a plural noun. Hence, what do we use? Plural verb. So what should be the correct answer? We have was. We. So what's the correct answer? We. So now let's go further by discussing indefinite pronoun concord. Indefinite pronoun concord. Another rule of concord, indefinite pronoun, indefinite pronoun concord. How do we determine the verb agreement? Perhaps 
An indefinite pronoun is used as the subject of a sentence. I've told you at the initial stage that subject is the doer of the action that takes place in a sentence. Subject appears before the verb. Okay. Now, indefinite pronouns. Indefinite pronouns that end in body, thing, one. Indefinite pronouns that end in body, thing, one, they take singular verbs. They take what? They, ag they agree with singular verbs. Examples of indefinite pronouns that end in body, thing, someone. They include someone, somebody, something, everything, nobody, Anybody, okay, I will think something, okay, nothing. So please take note, all these pronouns are called indefinite pronouns. They are called what? Indefinite, indefinite pronouns. So indefinite pronouns that end in body, thing, and one, they attract Singular verbs. They attract what? Singular verbs. Now let me give you an example. Everybody dash Okay. And you are given has or have. Now listen. What's the subject of this sentence? Everybody. Everybody is an indefinite pronoun. It ends in body. I've told you, indefinite pronouns that end in body, thing, one, they agree with singular verbs. Okay. Now, everybody dash sympathized with in. Now, everybody is an indefinite pronoun that ends in body. It agrees with what? Singular verbs. So, what's the correct answer? Has. Someone. Now, you're given snake, snakes. Okay, what's the subject of this sentence? Someone. Someone is an indefinite pronoun that ends in one. It agrees with singular verb. So someone dash into the class quietly. So what's the correct answer? Sneaks. Sneaks. Singular verb. So sneaks. So I've been able to explain many A in Concord. Indefinite pronoun. Indefinite pronoun Concord. Concord of uh, proximity. Now let us go further. Now the next one is Concord of percentage and fraction. Concord of percentage and fraction. Okay. Now when we use our percentage and fraction at the subject level of a sentence, the now that follows Percentage or fraction determines the verb. Okay. Now listen. If I say 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent of the students dash. Okay. Now here we use. Percentage at the subject level of this sentence. Percentage attracts the preposition of. When we use percentage and fraction at the subject level of a sentence, and the preposition of follows the percentage or fraction, the noun that follows percentage or fraction will determine the verb to be used. If a singular noun follows it, we make use of singular verb. If a plural noun follows it, we make use of plural verb. Okay, 50% of the students dash resumed. Now, we are given has and we are given have. Here we use 50%, which is a percentage, which accommodates the preposition of. The noun that follows it will determine the verb to be used. The noun that follows it is what? A plural noun. So what do we use? We use plural verb. 
So the correct answer is what? Have. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now let us look at this example. 50%. Okay. One third of the building, building dash Okay, now we have option has and have. We have uh, have slash as. We have option C. We have has and has. Then option D, D we have have. Okay. One third of the building dash being painted. Now, here we use one third, which is what? A fraction. One third accommodates the preposition of. I told you that the verb that follows it determines the verb to be used. Now, I mean, the noun that follows it determines the verb to be used. To be used. Okay. The noun that follows one third of mm -hmm. is what? Building, which is building, which is a singular noun. So what do we choose? A singular verb. Okay. As dash. Been, so what's the correct answer? Has been painted. And 60% of the students. Now, here we use percentage, which accommodates the preposition of. The noun that follows it is student, which is a singular noun. So what do we use a singular verb? So what's the correct answer? As. Let's look at how to make use of all in concord. All in concord. Of course, all is also treated as an indefinite pronoun. But it does not end in word body, one, or thing. Okay. Now, all, all, when we use all at the subject level of a sentence, when we use all at the subject level of a sentence, it can agree with a singular verb, it can also agree with a plural verb, depending on the contextual usage of all. All can take singular verb, it can also take a plural verb, depending on the contextual usage of all. Now, when we use all, at the subject level of a sentence, to represent everything, to denote everything, it takes a singular verb. That is, when all denotes everything, it agrees with words a singular verb. Now look at this example. All dash not well with. Peter, okay, you are given is, you are given are. Now, let's look at the function of all in this sentence. I told you initially that all can agree with either a singular verb or a plural verb, depending on the contextual usage. All can be used at the subject level of a sentence to represent everything. It can also be used to represent people. When it represents people, it agrees with plural verb. Okay. Now, all dash not well with Peter. What is all representing here? All is representing everything. It's denoting everything, which means everything is not well with Peter. So in, in as much as all is used at the subject level of this sentence to represent everything, it agrees with a singular verb. So what's the correct answer? Is. Now let's look at the second example, not all that glitters dash gold. Not all that glitters dash gold. Now you are given is, you are given her. Now all at the subject level A, what does it represent? Everything. So what's the correct answer? Is. 
not all that glitters is gold. Not everything that glitters is gold. So we choose what? A, a singular verb because all is denoting everything. Please take note. So when we use all to denote people, it agrees with a plural verb. And you are giving all dash expected to witness the occasion. Okay, now look at this option. What is all representing here? People. So when we use all to denote people at the subject level of a sentence, it agrees with a, it agrees with a plural verb. So what do we choose here? Are uh, expected to witness the occasion. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now let's look at some of in Concord. Some of. Some of. Some of. When we use some of at the subject level of a sentence, it takes a plural noun. Some of my friends. Friends is what? Plural noun. And it agrees with a plural verb. It agrees with what? A plural verb. It agrees with a plural verb. Okay, some of my friends dash Okay, some of my friends, dash, then you are given is, you are given her. Here we use some of at the subject level of this sentence. When a plural countable noun follows some of, it agrees with a plural verb. It agrees with what? Some of my friends are interested. Okay, now what's the, what's the plural verb? Her. So some of plus plural countable noun, plus plural verb. That's the formula. Sum of, when we use sum of at the subject level of a sentence, it takes, it can also take an uncountable noun. But when it takes a plural countable noun, a plural verb is taken. Am I communicating? Okay. Sum of the, sum of the ladies, Okay, some of the ladies, is it is or her? Here we use some of at the subject level of the sentence. Some of accommodates a plural countable noun. So what do we use? Plural verb. So what's the correct answer? Some of the ladies are married. So the correct answer is. Now let's look at a situation whereby an uncountable noun follows some of. When an uncountable noun appears after some of, a singular verb is taken. A singular verb is what? Taken. Okay, now let's look at this one. Sum of plus, plus uncountable noun plus singular verb. Okay, now look at it. Sum of the water dash on the floor. Some of the water. Okay, here we use some of at the subject level of this sentence. Some of accommodates an uncountable noun. What's the uncountable noun? Water. water. Am I communicating? So what do we what do we what do we use? Singular verb. So we are given spill. You are given spills. So what's the correct answer? Spills. spills. I've told you any verb, any lexical verb that has the suffix s is treated as words as a singular verb. So, spills is what? Singular verb. Please take notes. Do I seem to be communicating? Okay. Now, the next one is double title, subject, concord. Double title, subject, concord. Double title, subject, concord. Double title, subject, concord. Okay. Of course, when two nouns or two items are connected by the coordinating conjunction and, how do we determine the verb agreement? When two nouns or two items are connected by the coordinating conjunction and at the subject level of a sentence, 
how do we determine the verb that we control the subject? Now listen. When two nouns are connected by the coordinating conjunction and, and those two items are viewed as one, a singular verb is taken. When two items are connected by the coordinating conjunction and, and those two items are viewed as one, a singular verb is taken. Okay. Now look at this. Rise and rise and beans. Dash my choice. Oh, let's say okay. Now look at this. Here we have two nouns, two items connected by coordinating conjunction and these two items are viewed as one. So what do we use? Singular verb. Rice and beans, that's my choice, is my choice, not are my choice. So when two nouns are connected by the coordinating conjunction and, and those two items are viewed as one entity, a singular verb shall be taken. Okay. Okay, look at this example. The foolish and wicked queen dash kicked the bucket. Okay. The second example, the foolish and Okay, the foolish and um, wicked queen dash kick the bucket. Okay, now let's look at these options. We have uh, as and we have have. Now, there are two nouns that are connected by the coordinating conjunction and air. The first noun is the foolish, wicked queen. These two nouns are viewed as one. The, the queen is wicked. The queen is the same. They are referring to the same person. The foolish and the wicked queen. Am I correct? These two adjectives, they are used to represent one person. Because the second noun does not take a determiner. Am I communicating? So the, the queen, the same person is foolish. The same person is also what? Wicked. Am I communicating? So the, the foolish and wicked queen dash kick the bucket. So what should be the correct answer? As. Because these two adjectives co connected by the coordinating conjunction and they are referring to the same person. Am I communicating? But if I say, okay, look at this. The chemistry teacher the chemistry teacher and the physics teacher dash arrested. Okay, now you are given has, you are given have. Look at this. Here we use coordinating conjunction and to connect two items at the subject level of this sentence. The first noun is the chemistry teacher. The second noun is what? The physics teacher. If you look at this two, the chemistry teacher is different from because the second noun takes what? A determiner. So what do we use? That means there are two different people. Am I communicating? The chemistry teacher is different from the physics teacher. So what should be the correct answer? What do we use here now? Have. But if we remove D, if we now write the chemistry teacher and physics teacher, it becomes what? As. Because physics teacher does not take what? A determiner. So for the mere fact that it does not take a determiner here, that means that the chemistry teacher is also what? So the, that means that the two nouns are referring to one person. So what do we use? Singular verb. But if the second noun takes a determiner, then we use what? A plural verb. So if we remove article D, what do we use? Uh, we use as. We use as. Do I seem to be communicating? The next one is categorization concord. Categorization 
conquered. Of course, there is a name that is used to refer to a category of people. For example, if I say the rich, the poor, the needy. If you look at this phrase, you will discover that it is a formation, it is a combination of determiner, of determiner, D, plus what? Adjective. Rich is an adjective. D is what? A determiner. Am I communicating? Is, is an article. Am I communicating? Okay. So, categorization concord is an aspect of concord in which the subject is a combination of article D plus words, adjective. So when we use the, this subject, it takes a plural verb. It takes what? A plural verb. The rich, the poor, the needy. Do I seem to go because? So the rich refers to a category of people. The poor refers to a category of people. The needy refers to what? A category of people. So when they are used as subject of a sentence, they agree with plural verb. They agree with what? Plural verb. Okay, look at this example. The rich also dash. Okay, you are, you are given cries. You are given cry. The subject of this sentence is a combination of article, D, and what? Adjective. Adjective. Referring to a category of people. So in this context, a plural verb will be considered. Am I communicating? Not a singular verb. So the rich also cry. So plural verb. Take notes. Okay. Another example. The poor dash our sympathy. The poor dash our sympathy. Now you are given deserve. You are given deserves. What's the subject of the sentence? The poor, which refers to a category of people. It, how do we determine this subject? A combination of article, D, plus what? Adjective. So when we have this as our subject, it agrees with what? It agrees with a plural verb. So what should be the correct answer? Deserve. Deserve is what? A plural verb. Remember, any Lexical verb that has a suffix that has a suffix is what is that has the suffix s is what is a singular verb. Okay. Now the next one. So I hope I'm clear with categorization concord. The next one is called pluralia tantum. Pluralia tantum in concord. Pluralia tantum in concord. Pluralia tantum. Tantum in Concord. Okay, of course, these are singular nouns that appear as if they were plurals. These are singular nouns that appear as if they were plurals. Of course, some singular nouns have natural S ending. A good example is politics. Politics. Can you give me another example? We have economics. Mathematics, physics. We have billiards. We have uh, misus. These are examples of singular nouns that appear as if they were plural. Am I communicating? So we call it pluralia tantum in concord. Okay, when a singular noun that appears as if it is a plural. When a singular noun has natural S ending, don't treat it as a plural subject. Am I communicating? OK, look at this now. Politics is a singular noun that appears as if it is what? A plural. Because it has a plural marker. And what's the plural marker? S. Am I communicating? For the mere fact that all these nouns, they have 
an indicator of plural markers does not mean that they should agree with what? Plural verb. They, they remain singular now, and they must agree with singular yeah. verb. Now look at this. Politics dash politics dash it, it, politics is the correct answer is what is for the mere fact that politics ends in s does not make it what a plural noun it remains a singular noun despite the despite the fact that it ends in what s despite the fact that it has an indicator of a plural marker so it agrees with what a singular verb. So politics is a dirty game, not politics are dirty game. Am I communicating? Now, now look at this one. Measles dash Now measles. Okay, measles is a singular noun that appears as if it is words. As if it is what? Plural. Because of the what? Because of the S, which is an indicator of a plural noun. Am I communicating? Yeah. So for the mere fact that it, has, it ends in S, does not justify, justify it as what? As a plural noun. It remains a singular noun, and it must attract what? A singular verb. So misus is a deadly disease, not a. Do I seem to be communicating? OK. By and large. These are the rules of concord we have treated today. Many a or many an in concord, indefinite pronoun concord, which has to do with the use of pronouns that end in body, thing, and one. All in concord. Some of in concord, double title subject concord. Concord. This has to do with the use of coordinating conjunction to connect two items at the subject level of a sentence. Then we have singular nouns that appear as if they were plural in concord. These are the nouns that end in X. They, these are the nouns that have indicator of a plural marker. However, they remain a singular noun, despite the fact that they have words S ending. Example, politics, Mises, billard civic, and so on. The concord of percentage and fra fraction. And the last one is concord of proximity, which has to do with the use of correlative conjunctions in concord. Either or, neither nor. These are conjunctions that are used in PS. Have a nice day, class. Till we meet in, an, in another class. Bye for now.